Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, I wanted to do a quick unboxing of some art supplies that was sent to me by a fellow painter and friend. I've mentioned him before on this channel, uh, Mr. Mark. He had made some tools for scraping and scratching, and I've utilized them in some, um, some videos. So, he had picked up two brushes for me that were on clearance, and in this box he then added a whole bunch of different stuff. So let's take a look at what we're going to start seeing in some future videos because I'm going to go ahead and use these, obviously. So first we have the Velvet Touch uh, Round for acrylic watercolor oil. I don't usually use round brushes, so um, I'm actually looking to explore that direction. And there's some other brushes that I believe he included that I want to explore as well. These, he had told me about, I guess a whole bunch of um, makeup brushes, which will be cool to do a video on. Because from there, we can see what type of textures, and then you can raid your um, your pantries, not pantries, but the, uh, the cabinets in the bathroom, the closets for different brushes and seeing how you can um, go ahead and utilize them. I know some people will take these type of brushes and use them to splatter textures. And I'm curious how these big brushes will be for washes. And down here, I guess it's kind of like a makeup applicator. I see that same thing come with um, the pan pastels and get used in pastels. So there's a lot of ideas that are just coming to mind right off the bat because of all the things that are made you know, in these lines. So that'll probably give you a lot of ideas on what you can grab from around the house or from relatives or if you can throw stuff away. All right, let's see what else we got. This is wrapped up. There's some scissors right here. What I found is if you buy like a large box of scissors, a multi-pack, and just have scissors in each room, it'll really help out. Okay, so we have this tube. He told me about this. He said, don't get like turned off by the name of the brand, Art Whale. Uh, he said that this is a really good um, light red. Let's see what pigment it is. PR254. I'm not sure what pigment that is. Permanence 2. I'm not sure if it's out of 3 or out of 5. But that's something that we could do as solo painting with. And I could look more into this company and we could see how much they are and if it's um, something for monochromatics worth exploring. Alright, so thank you for that, Mr. Mark. That's going to be cool. You all know how much I love monochromatics. Okay. Some more um, makeup brushes. A lot of these are kind of like a, like a rounded flat. I'm not sure what the name is for that. And this one that's poking out on the side, I actually want to take it out. Because it's reminding me of something that Joe Menza was talking about the other day. It's kind of on an angle. And I wonder if this is very similar to a... Um, it was like a deer hoof brush. I don't own a deer hoof brush, and it looks like it's what I saw online when I was talking about it, which was good for texturing. So, and the other good thing is, all these brushes, you can really just like use and abuse them and probably cut them up and play around. All right, what do we have next? Okay, he had mentioned a fan brush. This must be it. This is uh, Royal, and with fan brushes, uh, I'm mentioning Joe Menza again. Joe's been playing around with them. Um, Herman Peckle uses them a lot, and I've seen it in some of his videos. I, and I want to try that application of watercolor with that wet and wet and getting that effect in that, in that fashion. It's a very, very loose application, and I'm very curious about that. And then there's a gentleman on uh, Instagram 
who does these small gouache paintings with this really beat up fan brush. And it's almost very kind of pixelated, using it as like a flat, but really cool. So it's really versatile brush, the fan brushes. I just haven't gotten to that stage yet. All right, what is this? Solo Mini Calligraphy. This might be some more brushes. He definitely packaged and prepared things very well for shipping. Okay, so these I think are the two brushes that I had him pick up for me. And I want to make sure that I'm not damaging them. He had found them on clearance if they are what I think they are, which we'll find out in a moment. Yep. Now these brushes are like really expensive brushes. Um, I don't think I've spent more than $20 on a brush. Maybe let's just say 25 to be safe. Um, these is of a uh, squirrel mops. And I think they might be made with the, um, the Russian blue squirrel. I'm not sure. But these, I think MSRP are like $60, $70 for these sizes, or at least starting. And they were on sale and then clearance at a local art shop. And I had sent him the money for that. And that's when he had sent all this other stuff. So I'm really excited about this. And I believe that um, Herman Peckle and some other artists use these. So I'm looking to incorporate these, uh, these quills. I'm going to put this on the side for right now. Let's see. There we go. All right. We still got a lot more stuff in here. This is trash. Move on the side. Oh, okay. So he had talked about this set, um, Koi Watercolors. I had a pan set of the Koi brand. And I think I think I either got it off of Amazon or uh, Hobby Lobby, and this was in the very beginning. And I gave it to one of the my fellow teachers to kind of give as a gift to, to students that were taking part in a poetry reading contest. And that was the pan set. Um, then from Mr. Mark, I had heard that there was the tube set, and he had spoken quite highly of it. Um, I know he's been moving over on to uh, Daniel Smith and um, the Windsor Newton when that was on sale. So I think he was moving away from these brands. But I'm looking forward to utilizing this. Whenever this happens, what, we can find out how much this MSRP for and where you can find it and um, if it's recommendable. So we could do a whole video on that. He did say the red and the green were pretty used up, which is totally fine. I appreciate all this. What's this guy? Okay. I was just looking for scissors. Looks like we got another brush, but it's, he did mention he was sending a uh, rigger. Now, I have the number one silver black velvet that I use, and I have the number four silver black velvet that I use. This is Low Cornell Script, a size one. I don't have any water nearby to dip it in to see how it points. This might be a vintage one. He had told me he had, he had went to a few um, antique shops and thrift shops and found some antique uh, brushes. So I'm going to have to ask him about that. So thank you for this. I'm really excited for that. Oh, nice. This has been something that I've been playing around with. Um, I came close to actually ordering one of these the other day. Uh, Jack, uh, I don't know if it's Richson. They're bamboo pens or their reed let's see 
when I was telling about what I picked up, he had said, okay, yeah, bamboo reed. And um, I can actually use this to compare to the one that I got off of Amazon, which was a different like kind of no-name brand. And we could see if there's any difference in quality. Right off the bat, it looks like there's a difference in hole size, potentially. All right, so that'll be cool. That'll be a cool comparison. Because when I use this one, the one that I got off of Amazon, I uh, I'd seen these, and these are a little pricey for the individual ones. And I had just bought like a, a bulk no-name. Um, but that being said, I had an immense amount of fun with it. So I'm looking forward to that. Let's see, so this is our last thing in the box. So once again, before I open it, just a huge thank you to Mr. Mark. Really appreciate you sending all of these um, goodies. And I can't wait to start using them on the channel. Winsor Newton Artist Charcoal uh, Soft Vine. Hobby Lobby. This. My Hobby Lobby doesn't carry the Winsor Newton Charcoal. And the colors on this make me think that this is really old. 1996. Huh. Their trademark. Uh, 1990. That might be vintage charcoal. I'm gonna I'm gonna message him after this and see what he says. That's cool. I do have some vintage art supplies, so those are always great. Now one of the things that you've seen on this channel is this scraping tool that he had made and sent me. And I always forget the name. It's like a polycarbonate, I think, the material. And he had one that he didn't finish rounding out or kind of getting to the point that he wanted them at. And he said I could very gently shape this the way I wanted to. So I have this one, and now I have this guy that I can play around with for, um, for unique sc uh, scraping. Because I use the part of the credit card but I have like a whole bunch of these just making a mess around the house. So having a designated tool, if I can get this the right way, will be the way to go. I am very, very excited. This is a really cool uh, gift package. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Mark. Oh, I got two scissors right here. See? Just start leaving all over the place. I am really really looking forward to making videos with all of these different supplies and I hope that you all are too. On that note, um, if you like this channel please like subscribe. Um, give a shout out to Mr. Mark down below uh, for being so cool and uh, sending all these cool things for us to play with in future videos. Take care and have a great day. Thank you.